So I'm at ZenCon, uh, PHP 2012, and I am with... Kent Mitchell. I'm the Senior Director of Product Management for Zend. Awesome. So uh, let's assume I'm a PHP developer, mm -hmm. and I just heard PHP can... Now I can build, now build mobile apps in PHP. Holy shit, who knew? How do I do that? Well, it's really interesting. Um, actually, when we talk about building mobile apps in PHP, what we're really talking about is using web technologies like JavaScript on the mobile side and then converting those to native apps for iPhone and Android and using PHP to actually support the server side. So you're talking about sort of cloud-connected mobile where the mobile side is going to PHP web services on the back end using JSON and RESTful services. So it gives you a, a nice way of doing end-to-end -end where you can link the mobile directly to the web services in a quick drag and drop kind of way. Build the web services, drag and drop, and have a graphical UI for building the mobile application as well. Awesome, can we take a look? Sure. So, what we have here is uh, Zen Studio. This is Zen's IDE. And a quick example of this is we can say, create a cloud-connected mobile project. So are you able to get this? Yep. So. I can create basically a project that has both a cloud side and a mobile side. And I need to, hang on one second while I put on my glasses. I need to, to put it into one cloud, so I'm just going to use the Zen Developer Cloud for this. And I say create a simple RESTful service. And I say finish. And what it's going to do is it's going to create me two projects. One for the cloud side and one for the mobile side. So it automatically gives me a nice little uh, drag and drop interface for composing my mobile application here Very cool. and on the cloud side it gives me something called the gateway editor where I can actually create web services also with drag and drop so let me do something here very quickly um, first I need to deploy the application out to my cloud just so that the application is out there I'm going to run that in the background We don't really need to watch that run and then I'll show you a little bit about this mobile application so the mobile application here has a button, for example, and you can see that this button here is linked to a web service. So it's going to call a GET web service, a RESTful web service, and it's going to call this customer's uh, web service. So it's actually testing right now to make sure that our code deployed, which mm -hmm. it did. We'll go back to Studio here really quick. So, oops, it's showing up on the screen that way. Oh, okay, never mind. So. We've got that bound. That's actually this web service that you see right here. So here's the web service. If I want to look at this web service and test it, I can say test it. It'll pop up a little testing tool for me. You can see that it's calling myphpcloud.com, cloud, which is the name of the project, and here's that customer web service that I have. If I run it, you can see down here I've got some JSON output with a bunch of users in it. So what we have here is a little mobile application that has a button that's bound to that web service. So I can just run that very quickly from here to test it out. I just say run as a web mobile application. So this is running in some technology called Kodaka. Uh, we license this technology. Now when I click this button, it's actually going to call the remote web service and show me the list of data that came back from that web service. And if I click on any one of these, it'll tell me where Frank is and what he's doing. It'll tell me where Mark is and what he's doing. So now what we want to do is show you how quickly you can actually turn this into uh, a much more powerful application. So if I take this and I say let's add a new page to add users. So we're going to add a new page to our, our mobile app. Mm -hmm. And then we can come here and with a simple drag and drop interface we can have a header. Whoops, that was a footer. I didn't really want that. <laughs> and get rid of that. I'm back here to my page again. And my components. I still have a footer. Oh well. Ignore my footer. Let's have a <laughs> header make it call it add and then we need a button so we can get back to the original page we'll call that one we'll call it index we'll call the button back we'll give it a little icon to make it have a left arrow my typing is terrible as you might notice you're doing a great job I just sprung this on you at the last minute here and you're building an application in front of my eyes so, so it's pretty cool. here we're gonna put the we need the name of the user and we need a name for this field and we're going to need a location for the user. Let's call this location and we'll call this low text. So what I'm doing is I'm adding widgets to my application here. Now I'm going to need a button to actually add this user to the database. So mm -hmm. we'll call this button add 
and we need to call a web service. Oh wait, we don't have a web service yet. So let's go ahead and save this just so we have it saved. And we go back to Gateway XML, and let me show you how easy it is to add a new web service. I simply pick this thing over here called Route. Mm -hmm. I say I want to create a new route. So I just drag and drop it over here. It says, okay, what do you want the web service to be called? I want it to be called Add. I need it to be a post web service because I have to send it data. Okay, and then I just click OK, and it gives me a little teeny snippet of code here where I can actually type my web service. And all I really need to do is fill in the, the logic of my web service. All of the plumbing and all of the external stuff to set it up and transfer it is in is all being taken care of something by something called the Zen Server Gateway. And it's driven by this XML and a few code snippets, and it'll create a complete web service. Very cool. So I just have my customer data, and this is code completion in Zen Studio. So I can say there's an add function that will add a user to the web service. And I need my web service to have two parameters. Well, how do I do that? I simply type in two parameters into this PHP method, and it's actually added those two parameters to my web service. Right. So I don't really have to do anything else to create a web service that now takes two parameters. So I save this out. I save the gateway file out. Now it's automatically syncing that to the cloud for me. Mm -hmm. So as I sync that to the cloud, I can turn around and I can come back here. And I can just say test this. And you can see it pops up a little tester and it already knows the two parameters for me. So I'm going to put in Sunnyvale here for my location. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put in that Kent is not in Sunnyvale. I'm actually not. I'm in Santa Clara, but mm -hmm. the computer doesn't know that. I click Add. And you can see it ran the web service, got an OK response. And you can see that Kent was added to the database. So now let's go back to our mobile application. And what we're going to do is make this call that web service. So I just simply pick the, the web service I just created on the client side, so the, yes. or on the server side for the cloud. And I've got to give the widget a name because we have to know what widget binds the click. And then we just have to add the parameters. So we just say, well, loc comes from loc text. So that text field I created on the, the uh, mobile app right. and name, which is my web service thing, comes from name text, that other field I created. And if you want to see what it's going to do, it's going to create all this JavaScript, but that's not actually all that exciting. We'll just say OK. It's exciting and if I don't have to write it. It's exactly exciting <laughs> if you don't have to write it. And so you didn't have to write any of that stuff. It's already bound. Now we've got this bound to a button. Okay, so we've got, we can go back to our main page, we've got our name and location. Now if we go back to our index page, which is the main page here, we need one more button here. We need a button called Add, which is going to go to that Add page. And literally within a few minutes here, we've added a new page to the web application, we've bound it to a new web service, we've created a new web service, we're all ready to go. And in fact, if I save this out and I run it again, you can see we can still do get list and that one test that I did with Kent, we can see that Kent's in Sunnyvale mm -hmm. and I can call, if I did this all correctly, uh, we can call add and we can say uh, Bob is at, uh, I don't know, where do we, where would we like Tim to Buck go? Tim Buck 2, if that's Tim, spellable. Tim Buck, I don't know, Tim Buck 2. <laughs> Let's put it in and see if Google knows where Tim Buck 2 is. We clicked add, I don't know if you saw the little thing spin, but that's because it called the web service. And now if I come back and get list, Bob is in there. Bob is in Timbuktu. And if we say Timbuktu, clearly Google doesn't know where Timbuktu is, so it gives <laughs> us a blind map. But you can see in just a few minutes, I've created a new web service, I've deployed it into the cloud, I've created some new uh, widgets on this site. Now if we want to turn around and make this a native application, we've already integrated that into uh, the open source Apache project called Cordoba. Yes. Most people might know that better by the name PhoneGap, which mm -hmm. is its original name. Uh, but if I want to create that, I simply say create the iPhone OS application. I don't know if you saw that. Let me go back and show you. Right here you can create iPhone. It's also where you create Android or Windows Phone. I'm going to use iPhone because I'm on a Mac and it's a little easier for me to do that. And I just give it this name. doesn't really matter what I use there, but I'll use Zend, and it's going to create me a new mobile application project over here. And this is an, a project that's basically tied to and bound to the Xcode tools that you would normally use on a Mac. So if I cl come here and I simply say, run as an iOS application, 
it's going to build that project, it's going to launch the Xcode emulator, and it's going to basically bring up my application in Xcode. And so, in a few seconds here, I get the same exact application, and when I run it, it works exactly the same way, and I can turn around and build this and load it into a real iPhone. Now let me show you some, one last thing that I think is really cool as a developer. One of the things that's really hard is to debug web services, because mm -hmm. they, they come in from the mobile device, they come in from the emulator, they don't come in from a browser. And so it's really hard to trigger traditional PHP debuggers that way. We've added a new feature where you can come in here, you can simply right-click right and say start debug mode. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to go out to that Zen server that's running in the cloud, it's going to open an SSH tunnel and turn on what's called debug mode. Right. Now, when I come to my mobile application and I click on anything like get list, when it calls the web service, it's going to automatically trigger the debugger in this IDE. Mm -hmm. So I call the web service and right here you see that the debugger breaks. And if I want to set a breakpoint to diagnose my problem, like let's say, okay, I know routes is going to call get this get function, so let's go ahead and run until it gets to there. And just to show you, I set a breakpoint. When I come in here, I can see all of the information as soon as this breakpoint happens. I can see all of this information, like what's in the request, what's in, you know, what's going into the response. Probably would have been more interesting if I broken on add where I had parameter values. But <laughs> you get the idea. And then, you know, once you're done debugging, you know, so let's let this run. If we come back here to this thing, you know, it will basically refresh. Once you're de done debugging something, you simply come back in here and you say, you know, stop debug mode. And basically it will shut that mode off and now you're yes. back to full speed. Yes. So, in a nutshell, <laughs> what I've shown you is how quickly you can create a web service. I've shown you how you can build a mobile application, turn it into a native application, how you can bind buttons on that to web services and other things, and how you can bind the fields to the web service parameters. And it really is an incredibly simple way to create a set of web services and a mobile application that calls them that gives you that sort of end-to-end -end life cycle where you can debug on both sides and, and you can use, you know, you have, since it's Xcode, you have full access to all the Xcode debugging, you have full access to all the other Xcode stuff, so if you want to pretty that application up after you're done, it's all, it's all there and you've got the framework in place. And that's pretty much it. Thanks so much, Kent. You did a great job. Appreciate okay. it. Thanks.